Well, you can see from the heading that the topic of this video lecture is torque. Torque is any action that will cause a twisting of some object, an angular acceleration, a rotation. I show a rod. It's placed on top of a pyramid-shaped object called a fulcrum, which will serve as a possible axis of rotation of this object. Imagine an axle into the board. The rod could rotate about that axis, depending upon the values of the various forces acting on the rod. The rod weighs 300 newtons. The end of the rod, the right end, is six meters from the fulcrum. At the end of the rod, there is a pull, perhaps by a rope or string or cable wire or a chain attached to the end, a pull by a person, of 100 newtons, making an angle of 60 degrees with respect to the line that's perpendicular to the rod. That angle is 90 degrees. The effect of Earth's pull on the infinity of particles in this rod is the same as if there were a single force of 300 newtons applied to the center of the rod. The center of the rod is there, a distance of two meters from the axis, the fulcrum. I've already said, perhaps, that the pulling force is applied to a point that's six meters from the fulcrum. I discuss two of the forces acting on this rod. The final one is the contact force exerted upward, exerted upward by the fulcrum, unknown value C. My purpose in showing you this figure is to show you how to calculate torques. Some nomenclature, some vocabulary terms are in order. Points of application. Forces are applied at particular places on the object in question. We call those points the points of application. The point of application of the pulling force 100 newtons is there. The point of application of the Earth's pull is there. And the contact force is there. The next term you need to learn, you've just learned about points of application, is lever arm. A lever arm is a line segment that extends from the axis, right there, to the point of application of the force in question. So for example, the lever arm associated with the pulling force P100 newtons is the length, is the line segment that you can imagine that extends from the fulcrum to the point of application. Now there's yet another term you need to know. It's called the lever arm length. I just discussed the lever arm associated with P. The lever arm is a line segment that you can imagine that extends from the fulcrum there, from the axis there, to the point of application. The lever arm length is the length of that line segment. In this case, it's six meters. So the lever arm associated with the pulling force P is a line segment that extends from the axis to the point of application. And the lever arm length is the length of that line segment, six meters. Now let's go through the same thing for the weight vector, which is there. Its point of application is there. How soon you have forgotten? Lever arms are line segments that you may have to imagine that extend from the fulcrum, the axis, to the point of application of the force in question. The force in question here 
is the weight force whose point of application is there. The lever arm is that line segment there. And the lever arm length, you can see, is written out for you two meters. Finally, the contact force, its point of application is right at the axis. The line segment extends from the axis to the point of application is non-existent. It's zero length. And so there is no lever arm, and therefore the lever arm length is zero. What does all of these things have to do with torques? You'll see. There's one more thing you need to know about. What you need to know about are the things called the perpendicular parts of the forces acting. Let's look at the pulling force. 100 newtons. Makes an angle of 60 degrees with respect to that line that's perpendicular to this line segment that extends from there to there. The perpendicular part of this force is the component of this force that's perpendicular to the lever arm for that force. That lever arm is the line segment extending from there to there. And so its perpendicular part can be found using Sokotoa. It's this length there. It's the adjacent side of that right triangle whose hypotenuse is length 100 meet newtons. And so the perpendicular part of that force We'll symbolize it awkwardly as F perp is 100 cosine 60 degrees, which gives us exactly 5 0 newtons. That's the perpendicular part of the pulling force. Well, so what? Oh. Make it clear why we're studying these things soon enough. Let's talk about the perpendicular parts of the other two forces. Well, the weight force points straight down. It's perpendicular to its lever arm, just as this vector is already perpendicular to its lever arm, which extends from this point to that point. And so the perpendicular part of that vector needs no calculation. It's the full value, 300 newtons. And finally, there is no perpendicular part of the fulcrum force, the contact force that we need to worry about, as you will soon see, because its lever arm length is a zero. So we don't bother to talk about the perpendicular part of the contact force, because there's no lever arm for it to be perpendicular to. The lever arm length is zero for the contact force. Well now, once and for all, I'll show you how to calculate the torque associated with a force. The torque associated with a force is symbolized as tau lowercase t in Greek and it's positive or it's negative depending d times f per where D is the lever arm length. And we've already discussed what F perp is. And so for the pulling force, we may write down that the magnitude of the 
perpendicular. The magnitude of torque is the lever arm length, which in our case is six meters. times F perp, which is 50 newtons. But what about the choice of the sign? Well, here is the rule. Any force whose torque would cause a clockwise rotation, if it were the only torque acting, then such a torque is positive. On the other hand, if a torque would cause, if it were the only one acting, a counterclockwise rotation, then the torque is negative, and that's the case here. You see that with a fulcrum here, at the meter stick, my fingers be the fulcrum, imagine pulling with a hundred newton force at the right end of this pole, in which direction would it rotate? Not downward, but rotate upward, and that's counterclockwise. Consequently, the torque associated with that force is the negative of this quantity, which makes it negative 300 meter newtons. And so for the first time, we've seen what the standard international units are for torque. It's the meter newton. All right, this is one of the torques acting on our rod. Let's discuss the other two. The weight force. Tau is given by that expression, and it's a positive torque because that weight force were it the only one acting, my left hand is the fulcrum, would pull down this way, causing a clockwise rotation. By the rule I uttered earlier, positive sign is used. The lever arm distance for the weight vector is the length of the line segment, the length of the lever arm, between that point and that. And that length is two meters. So it's two meters times 300 unit, uh, 300 newtons. Final result, 600 meter newton. And so one more torque to go to the third and last force acting. The torque due to the contact force is zero because the lever arm length, D, is zero. And so the torque here is zero. In some problems you're asked to determine the total or net torque acting on an object. And in this case it would be 600 plus a negative 300 plus zero for a grand total of 300 meter newton. So let's review what I've told you. I told you about axes of rotation, in this case it was a fulcrum, points of application of forces, lever arms, lever arm length symbolized as D, and perpendicular parts of forces, and finally the equation for the torque of a particular force measured in meter newton units.